for. So you would not want to get bit by a stingray. That would be very, very painful. Luckily for us, stingrays are very gentle and kind, but they do not bite people on purpose. You would have to stick your hand very far up their mouth to get bit. So one thing you'll notice about the stingrays when they're eating is that it looks like you can see their, their smiling faces and their mouths up against the wall. But these two uh, nostrils that you see here are actually not their eyes. Their eyes are located on the top of their head. So they can't actually see their food up against the wall here. They're using a special stick sense called electroreception that they have where they can use the electro um, magnetic field <laughs> to sense where it is, which is why they're able to tell where their food is even though they can't see it. They can also tell where the diver is using this sense. And when you guys are up at the touch tank up above and you put your hands in the water, they can detect your heartbeat using this special sixth sense. Which is also part of why we ask that you don't splash up at the touch tank because just like any other fish, stingrays are fish and splashing will scare them away. But they do know that you're there when you put your hands in the water. So we ask that you guys don't splash up at the touch tank. Um, you'll notice while they're eating, they're making quite a bit of a mess. And we actually don't have to go back in to clean up this mess because these little fishies that you see swimming around along with the species will eat leftovers and that will be their lunch for the day. So there are four different types of stingrays that we have in this tank. These big ones that you see up against the wall here are our southern stingrays. These guys are all female here at the aquarium, and we have all female southern rays because these rays can have from six to 12 pups in a litter. So that's way too much for us to take care of here at the aquarium, which is why all of our southerns are girls. The next species of rays I want to talk to you guys about are another one of these big guys. You'll see one of them swimming right down here. These are our rough tail rays. There are two of them here in this tank. One of them is Max, and this one right here is Super Ray. Uh, fun fact about Super Ray is that he is actually the oldest Ray here at the aquarium. He was born in 1996, so he is about six years older than I am. So he's pretty old for a thing, right? He's getting up there. And the other one, Max, you'll see he's swimming around. He has a bit of a stubbier tail than the rest of them. He is our biggest gray here. He weighs over 250 pounds, which is very, very big. The next species of gray that I want to talk to you guys about are these cute little guys. These are uh, fans of These are the cow nose rays. We have both male and female cow nose rays here, so we do get uh, pups from time to time. We don't have any right now, but some of the cow noses are pregnant, so we should be getting some cute little baby stingrays sometime soon. Another cool thing about these guys is that they have these modified fins at the front of their mouth. So sometimes when they're swimming around, it looks like that they have a big open mouth that they're using to eat. But these are actually just fins that they're using to suction food underneath them into their mouths. And uh, Tomino's rays are part of the family of rays called eagle rays. And we have one other stingray, um, or three other stingrays to be specific, but one of their species of ray from the eagle ray family in this tank. And you won't see many of them down here because they get fed up top. And these guys are our spotted eagle rays. Uh, has anybody here seen the movie Finding Nemo? Yeah, if you, you remember uh, Stingray, Mr. Ray, who is their teacher, uh, the spotted eagle rays are the same species as Mr. Ray. And uh, going along with that, Spotted eagle rays are very, very smart, which is why we have to keep them up top because they're smarter than the rest of the rays. So they will steal food from the other rays. If we keep them down here, we have to distract them while we beat these guys. They're just that smart. Uh, another fun fact is that they can jump about six feet out of the water if they get enough momentum, which is very impressive. That is a long way for a ray to go. Now, one thing a lot of people notice about stingrays is obviously their stingers, or as we call them, their barbs. Now, all of their barbs here are trimmed, just like we would trim our fingernails. Uh, it takes about it takes them about three to four months to grow their barb fully back, 
which is part of why in the wild they actually will not sting or even try to sting unless they feel that their life is in danger because it is uh, one of their only defense mechanisms so they will only use it if they feel that they are totally threatened. It also can be pretty painful for them to sting since their barb does fall off after they sting. So they don't like the sting. Um, and they won't try to unless they feel that they are in danger. Now there's one other species of animal in this tank that I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, you guys might be a little worried that they're going to snatch some fingers off the touch tank. Does anybody know what it is? Yes, it is the sharks. Now the sharks in here, they look like cute little baby hammerheads. These are actually bonnet head sharks. They're a part of the hammerhead family. But they're very small, so these guys are full grown. This is as big as they're gonna get. And a pretty cool fact about these guys is that they are the only shark species that are going to be omnivores. Uh, another thing about them is that they are a part of a group of sharks called obligate ram ventilators, which means that they have to keep swimming all the time to breathe. I like to think of it as they have to ram their heads through the water to breathe because they don't have any mechanism to pump water over their gills the way that stingrays or other fish do. So it would be like if you had to keep your mouth open all the time and be running all the time to breathe. Uh, this is why when you guys are up in the tank, we ask that you don't touch the sharks. Since they have to keep swimming to breathe, they use people's hands as an obstacle to them swimming, which is an obstacle to breathing, so it can really freak them out and can sometimes damage their gills. So we ask that you only cut the stingrays for that reason. Now, unfortunately, uh, shark and ray species are some of the most endangered or threatened species in, uh, the, in the ocean, which is very, very sad. And a lot of times uh, it feels like there's not a lot that we can do as individuals to help them. The main reason for sharks and rays being endangered is overfishing about 50% of the catch caught by commercial fisheries is bycatch that ends up being thrown back into the ocean and this is a major uh, cause of uh, threat for shark and ray species. A lot of them die in this bycatch. Uh, another thing is that commercial fisheries do end up producing about 50% of the uh, plastic waste that we see in the ocean from shark and ray. And then finally uh, another Thing that's threatening them is climate change, uh, warming water, and making their environment less suitable to them. Which, again, a lot of times it feels like we don't have much control over these issues because so many of them are out of our hands. But some things we can always think about doing are choosing to reduce our seafood consumption, or if we are choosing to eat seafood, to look for sustainability labels to make sure we are making the most sustainable choice possible, to reduce our plastic waste and to keep up to date with environmental legislation because the only real way to protect marine life, like our wonderful sharks and rays that we have in here, is by uh, creating large protective marine protected areas that don't have barriers or boundaries for uh, fish movement because as we know, a fish don't really obey for the water. They don't really live like that. So. Okay. Large marine protected areas are the best way to protect our animals. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to come up and talk to me after the show. Uh, I love talking about the sharks and the rays and all the other animals in the aquarium. So enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you guys.